what's great is I, I could tell you we're going to explore what it's now, what it's like to be blind. What is that like to be the character that you can read about in the comic books, you know? And, and for us, we sort of detached ourselves from the idea of universe. You know, we went at this idea of like, this is a movie about Madam Web. And therefore, whatever has ha happened in the different versions of Spider-Man and all the different pieces of the Marvel world... We didn't want to contend with that. We wanted just it to be her story. And we felt that by starting when she can see and then going to where her sight is now a power, not a uh, not a literalness, there's going to be a challenge in how do you explore a character like that? Lorenzo, how are you? Really good. Thank you. Thanks for spending some time today with me. Oh, are you kidding? We're, you know, we're honored to have you. Honestly, uh, we were actually going to speak with you last year for Rise of the Beasts. And I know, I know uh, timing got a little shifted around last year, but we were so, we jumped at the chance when we got to talk to you again, because you've been part of so many incredible franchises throughout your career. Some of our favorite movies of all time, you've been responsible for bringing them to the screen. So uh, we're just grateful that you're able to share your time with us. Appreciate it. Start off by talking obviously about Madam Web and it's a character that not many people may know about. So what excited you most about introducing Cassandra Webb to the world? I really had admired, uh, interestingly, SJ's work. And um, so I was really excited to work with her. And funny enough, everything I sent to her, she passed on. <laughs> so to finally work with her on something. And then also the challenge of Madam Web is, is that you don't know much about her from the comic books. And that's both an opportunity and a challenge. Um, and I loved the idea of we're going to deal with her while she has sight. Um, and how did she get to where she is? And what it would be like to have some kind of power like that. So what was really attractive to me was watching a character struggle with a growing understanding that something really extraordinary is happening to her at first you know she thinks she's crazy um right and it's and i think what's very relatable about that is if that happened to me you'd start going boy i am losing it you know what the hell's going on so the character the ability to have such an evolution for a character was really attractive when you look at all of the 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 spider-man films this world of spider-man films that we've gone some of our favorite moments are always a character learning how to figure out to deal with these new powers and how it's affecting them on the personal side and how it's, you know, just figuring out how to use the them. Right? Story, right? right. And I think that's, what's so fun to see, you know, Cassandra go on this journey in this film, especially is her figuring that out, how these work, what is exactly is even happening in this world. Um, and that leads, you know, us to wanting to ask about Dakota Johnson, who, is you know she's so iconic in this film uh what was it about her that you're like you know she's the one that's gonna you know shepherd in uh cassandra to the world dakota has a vulnerability and you know she also has a a feminine quality that is really attractive there's something nurturing about her i would say and there's some there's something you feel is very warm and what was great about having her is it was so important to get underneath the skin of the, if you would, the hero. And, and, and what, you know, what I think the I hope audiences really appreciate and enjoy is this idea of a, a person who's so emotionally scarred as she was by the death of her mother, um, who has to be vulnerable enough. She's vul made vulnerable with that, but she's hardened herself to having an emotional relationships, right? And now she's thrust in this situation where two things are happening to her at the same time. One is she's having to contend with what the hell's going on in my brain. And the other is there's these three younger women who I don't want the responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Like that's not who I am. I don't want attachment. Attachment is a, um, you know, is something to be feared on a certain level, on a deeper level. So having Dakota, who has that vulnerability and that, and that motherly feeling, I think, um, sort of uh, finally embrace her own 
her own self is what's exciting in the movie that she finally takes on that. And I love that you talk about this vulnerability that she has to have and the fact that she's dealing with, you know, these three other girls that are kind of like thrust into her life. Uh, these are some amazing characters that, you know, we're, you're really feeding us with this movie by giving us so many different spider characters. And the best part about the spider verse is that it kind of opens up this door to all these infinite possibilities. So, you know, very curious here. Where do you think we're going to kind of see Cassandra pop up again down the road? <laughs> well, we're not in control of that, or the audience to a certain degree. So hopefully they'll embrace this movie enough to to get to us to another movie. What's great is I I could tell you we're going to explore what it's now, what it's like to be blind. What is that like to be the character that you can read about in the comic books? You know, and and for us we sort of detached ourselves from the idea of universe. You know, we went at this idea of like this is a movie about Madam Web. And therefore, whatever has helped happened in the different versions of Spider-Man and all the different pieces of the Marvel world, we didn't want to contend with that. We wanted just it to be her story. And we felt that by starting when she can see and then going to where her sight is now a power, not a, uh, not a literalness, there's going to be a challenge in how do you explore a character like that? And... And given that she's now, I don't think she really has mastered her skills at the end of this movie, but she's got a good sense of it. So you also have the ability to her to get better at what she does. So, you know, I can tell you if we get lucky enough to make another movie, we're going to be exploring the feeling of that character as they're going through that. Yeah, and, 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 and we appreciate that because I think, you know, for us, Madame Web was always a character, no matter what was the comic books or in the animated series or in a game She'd be so mysterious, and I think what Dakota brings and what the approach that you guys came with this film was bringing a lot more of a human touch and a human connection to her story. And I think that's what shines in this film is is the, the making them feel like real characters. Yeah, well, that was super important to us. We felt like that is a way to differentiate the movie from some of the other, uh, I'll say, comic book movies or I'll say superhero movies, whether they be DC or Marvel. Um, and try to keep it in that in that thing about well, this is about a person and what do they go through? Rounded is the more you can relate to the journey. You can admire Superman, but it's hard to be grounded and without you know what I mean. And it's and it's um, it, it was it was really exciting to not have the burden of trying to live up to that kind of movie. Yeah, you you guys really didn't make it your own with this. And I'm curious for you, you know, you've worked on so many incredible films throughout your entire career. What has kept you so excited about working in the film industry over the last, you know, few decades of you being a part of it? I had the advantage of doing a few things before I came. I didn't come to Hollywood until I was 30. And I had the advantage of not liking anything I did for a decade. <laughs> That's <laughs> honestly, the secret. Honestly. And so when I found something I really liked, um, I, I really jumped in. What's kept me going is the fact that you get better over time, hopefully. Um, and you get to understand character in a different way. You get to approach development in a different way. And the best thing about making a movie is it's never like the one before. So it's constantly a different situation. You know, there's always some catastrophe you're dealing with. It's always different. Or it's some crazy thing, you know, you mentioned beasts, you know, shoot in Peru during COVID. Okay, let's go. <laughs> you know, so it, it, it's that kind of challenge. And, and um, you know, in this case, the challenge of telling a story of four women finding their power, you know, and obviously uh, Dakota's character goes further than the others, but we're hinting at where we're going, right? Um, was a different kind of thing for me to do. So I love it, and I hope I can keep finding the challenge of it. You know, you've been a part of so many amazing franchises. You've really shepherded in a lot of great movies throughout your entire career, just, you know, Googling you, and it's like a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> you're, you're coming back to Sony, correct us if I'm wrong, from since 2010. What, what, what is it about Madam Web and about Sony that made you say, yeah, I want to I wanna come back to this? Well, I know it's not really about Sony in that way. It's really about changing, ch chasing that story, you know. Um, uh, 
you know, it's it's interesting that when you think about salt, you think about this. We're talking about female heroes, if you would. You know, yeah, and yeah. One of the things that I learned on salt, which it, then this is, goes back to you, the thing we were saying is you constantly get to learn. On salt, what I learned was that a hero has nothing to do with gender, nothing. So, what is a hero? A hero is some is what you hope that character will do in the situation of duress. So it was really interesting now to take on a different kind of, I'll say, female hero, but a different kind of hero, really. That's how I approached it, you know. Um, SJ looked at it differently than I did, and that gave a healthy kind of debate about how do you position accepting, you know, because I think what's very interesting about female heroes is often men will dismiss them because we are muscle oriented, you know, it's like, well, how are they not strong enough to do that? You know, and often women can't find it relatable because I'm not that physical person. It's a really interesting problem. It, it, it has. And I think when you see a female superhero movie or a hero movie that doesn't work, it's because they're trying to be female as opposed to who is the character and play to that character's strengths, and then men and women are going to see it the same way. So uh, I guess in a way I was drawn back to the Sony world from Adam Webb because I saw it as, again, another different kind of challenge to present a dynamic, vulnerable, um, and extraordinary character. You know, I really hope that we get to see um, uh, Dakota and these characters return because I think there is such a... Uh, a, a web of possibilities that you could really go down to tell, to tell, right? There's a lot of stories you could tell. Um, speaking of stories to tell, though, like if, if you don't mind us asking, like uh, Rise of the Beast last year, you introduced a really great ending to that film. Where are we if, if, if we have any updates on where this series may be going with? You know, the honest, the honest truth is we don't know yet. We're, we're really debating the, like, how do you do that? We're going to deliver on that, but how do we deliver on that? So um, I wish I could tell you more, but I, I don't even know more myself. No, we're, it's all good. We're just uh, we're talking, we're excited. We're talking to writers right now and, and trying to find that thing where we all go, yeah, that's it. That's and exciting. That's the thing about a project like Madam Web is, is for me, what gets me excited is when I go, yeah, that thing, you know? Definitely. Um, I may not know it, but when I see it, I know it. And from from my perspective, and and so this is a movie that you know I'm really hoping we have success because it is different in terms of how we're trying to present this genre. And uh, I hope the audience is entertained by it and embraces it enough to get to that second story. For sure, Lorenzo, we're we're so grateful for your time today. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. We cannot wait to see what you get to work on next. And we hope we get to talk to you again. Well, you since you guys are clearly Transformers fans, wait till you see the animated movie we're making. Oh my oh, gosh, we, we are stoked for that. We are so excited for that. Wow. Oh, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, we can't wait. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lorenzo.